Okay, so guys, today we're gonna cover the roles as an employer. Um, I'm gonna share the, the notes. There's a video that I had prepared. Uh, it has not, we have not been able to transfer it from another device, so just bear with me. I will take you through the few uh, principle of uh, being employer. And again, if you have any questions, just uh, add them on the chat uh, below. We will then uh, take you through. We have Unum Pumelelo, who is an accountant and a tax practitioner also to assist you for any additional service that you may actually require. I'm gonna just go ahead so that I don't waste your time because uh, it seems people are a little bit uh, shy today to share their experience and that's okay. So I will then just take you through the items. Okay, one second. Okay. Okay, guys, this is just a little bit difficult for me to manage today. I hope you can see this. Can you please confirm everyone that you can be able to read this? Just make a note on your chart that you can be able to read this. Oh, great. Okay, perfect. Perfect, great, it is clear. Okay, so entrepreneurs, the last time we spoke about being a director and also being a taxpayer. And today we're gonna talk about being an employer. So you have to remember being an employer in terms of uh, building up your business, you need to actually employ people to be able to build a business that is sustainable. I know we generally struggle with this one as entrepreneurs. We actually want to do everything. We do not understand that the growth is actually in employing others, not necessarily us creating jobs for ourselves. When we create jobs for ourselves, we basically are creating a hole that is going to suck you in and you will never get out. You're going to see like three, four, five years down the line, you're still running like you're a startup. So this should give you some energy to say, I need you to actually, for me to make more money, I need to employ more people so that those people then make money for you. Okay, so you then also need to remember, we had shared with you on the HR series, those who have not actually uh, loaded that, Bonolo, please add the link for uh, the HR business because some of the things that we're covering here is already also covered on that webinar that we did on HR. Uh, but also some of the things we have spoken about quite often relating to administration is also things that we've already articulated and explained. Uh, we will include the link for you, but also go and have a look at the videos. Perfect. Everyone seems like they can see. Okay. 
So as an employer, you have to understand that you're gonna have regulators that are regulating how that relationship is actually gonna be managed and run. The first one is actually is receiver of revenue. The second one is department of labor. The receiver of revenue in here is basically just a collector. They are collecting money which you will have collected from your employee for pay as you earn. Pay as you earn is based on income tax. That is when you will actually have, when someone you're paying someone at a specific amount, you will need to deduct pay as you earn so that that person can contribute in terms of income tax. But another regulator is basically Department of Labor where they regulate several legislation and one of them is Unemployment Act, Insurance Act, and also basic conditions of employment equity, employment equity, labor relations. So this is basic conditions of employment act, employment equity act, labor relations act, and skills development act. The skills development act is then linked up with the skills development levy which is paid by the employer to receiver of revenue, and that money receiver of revenue pays it to citizens. The UIF, you pay 1% and um, the employee pays 1%, that total of 2% get paid over to receiver of revenue. Receiver of revenue takes that money and give it to Department of Labor. The other also legislation that comes in with Department of Labor is COIDA, and that again is a cost to the business. It's not a cost to in, in terms of uh, being part of the contribution that the employee makes. We need to. This is our direct cost as a business. So is the skills development levy. So the best way of approaching this is first identify who are the regulators and which legislation they are actually administering, and then ask yourself how do I actually build my knowledge and the know-how on understanding the details of each of the components within those legislation? It is quite a bit when you look at it and it's sometimes a little bit overwhelming, but I will take you through the processes that you will need to follow to enable you to really begin to understand these issues in more detail. And guys, this is a very small group. As I am covering these things, I expect you to actually send through your questions and your notes, please. Bunolo has just uh, placed that link for you on the YouTube. And within the YouTube, there is a document that you can download to help you to go through some of the things that we've already covered on the webinar that we did on human resources. And I will then take you through the process now on what exactly do you need to do to actually get yourself ready as an employer. I guess the first thing that you need to make sure that you actually uh, have in place before you bring the second employee, remember you were the first employee into this business. So the first thing you have to do, you have to register with uh, receiver of revenue as an employer using MP101. And you also need to make sure you register with Department of Labor in terms of the UIF. So that's the first thing you will need to actually do. Register yourself as an employer using a form called MP101 and then also register with Department of Labor and we will also provide you the links. As we're going through this, um, no, 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 Pumelelo, please uh, put the link for the registration for the MP101 or MP101 and also the registration for the UIF for the employees. Please understand that the UIF, you have to do the registration, but you also need to complete another form which we call a UIN19. That needs to also be completed every month. Okay. I'm gonna now start. And guys, again, I'm watching the chat. Please put through your questions.
So where do you start? Esther is saying she's not hearing anything. Can you confirm that everyone can hear? We have tested the volume and everything. Can you guys just make sure that everyone can be able to hear? Esther, please check your own machine. You might actually have muted yourself. Okay, Unon uh, Pumelela is gonna actually load a link for you guys for, to provide with the registration as an employer under receiver of revenue and also with Department of Labor. We are registering each employee, their start date and their end date and the salary. They also will, in other instances, even ask additional information like what level they are and, and so on. Guys, Nampumelilo, please put the link in relation to receiver of revenue plus also Department of Labor. Okay, guys, let's go through the process. So the, the main aim, guys, is to get your process right, even from your head. You now have registered with a receiver of revenue, you are employed. As a director yourself, you have registered also yourself to make sure that in terms of income tax, because, because at your personal capacity, because you're a director, you should actually set up to be a provisional taxpayer instead of a salary, because at this point, you may not be getting regular payments. And another thing also that will help you is that, you see, if you set up things right, it will also allow you, should anything happen to you, you can, you can actually claim for the insurance, which is unemployment insurance. Okay, so what are the processes that you're gonna need to actually make sure that in your head you are setting up, that you are building up. The first thing that you need to do, one, you must have an organogram in your business. The current organogram that you have in your business, but also what's the long term? What's the growth plan that you have? And how would you fill up the vacancies and the positions in your business? And the organogram basically should be aligned, as I said, to your growth plan and what you're actually putting in as your objectives of your business based on the guidance that you will have built up from your strategy. Your organogram, you should not look at what the big business schools are telling you. You should not be using the six to seven, in other instances, eight business functions. Instead, you should look on the three. When we were doing business administration, we did cover in more detail what this entails. But in a very short, um, uh, definition, admin is what we call corporate service function, is what we also call head office, um, head office uh, cost or head office activities. Admin is the things that irrespective of the size of your business, you will need to actually have in place, no matter how big or small your business is. As you're building that, you have to understand what those admin activities are. It will be HR, finance, legal and compliance, IT, and the last one is the office administration. No matter how big your business is, no matter how small your business is, you will always gonna need. Those are the ones that you are classifying as admin. And then we have the third leg which we call it business development. And a business development is very much different to admin. Admin is very much internal focus, whereas the business development is outreaching, going out to the market. So that will be what? Your marketing, your sales, your public relations, and also it will be stakeholder relations and customer relations. The second last one is operations. Operations is mainly looking at your service delivery, your product delivery, and also product development and, se and service development. It also looks at project management. It also looks at things which are related on how you actually build up your research and development. And others have included quality management system. I don't recommend that. I generally say that you should actually look at making sure that quality management is across all business function. So it can't be just only an operation. Obviously, with ISO standards and stuff like that, you might need, the majority might be in there, but you must figure out a way of integrating quality management system across all business functions. 
So within that, you then start also working out what are the things that needs to be done and that you create checklists. What are the activities I want to be executed from these business functions? We have provided you guys already for the admin a full detail on what will be a typical small business checklist. And from that checklist, it then helps you to work out the job description of whoever that you want to bring into your business. Basically, the checklist is about activities that you want to be conducted. You also have to keep in mind that some of these things can actually be in-house and also be outsourced. And assuming because you have chosen to be an employer, it will be then, you will then are considering having things in-house. Keep in mind that there are certain things that you, as you're building up, if the cost of having it in-house is higher than the cost of having outsourcing, you might really need to consider maybe having a hybrid uh, system where both systems are actually existing. Maybe in other instances, maybe they are doing the expect or the outsource is doing a strategy and then operationally, then you have someone who's running things um, in more uh, 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 on daily, weekly, so that you can be able to monitor things very close. So that might actually be one of the ideas that you need to think about. Uh, we actually, uh, once you have done your job description, you can then create a job profile, which you will use to do an update. Now, someone is saying uh, uh, there's quite a few comments that are coming through. Let me have a look at those. Um, and I hope they are covering what we have covered in here and also what we have covered in here. I'm going to just have a look. Okay. Um, thank you, Nampumelela, for loading in. So Tyza is asking, at what stage is the business required to register for COIDA? Does it depend on the industry? No. COIDA, you need the day you actually register as an employer. You should also be registering with uh, COIDA. But understand how COIDA actually works. COIDA is an annual assessment that gets done and reviewed after the financial year end. So at the end of the year, you will send your, you complete the return and that return get assessed and then they send back. So you should actually get the registration done. They will ask you for your payroll. They will ask you, but if it, it's, it's like a quarter, the way it works is work like a past. It looks at the past. It doesn't look on the forward. It's not like this. Here, they're not going to ask you for a payroll. They're just going to ask you to register yourself as an entity. But with COID, the way it works, it works in terms of looking at um, the past. How much did you pay for a payroll? And they use the total payroll, uh, excluding the director's salaries, and calculate what will be the rate. And that rate is based on the industry. Other industries uh, actually have higher risk, like the industries that may be investors, maybe that have health risk, but people like ourselves, where we work in offices, our risk is generally very low. So the way quarter works, you, it use payroll, it use the earnings of your salary. Yes, you will need to make sure that you understand what information they need, but you, can, you only need to do this after the first year of operation because it always looked backwards. But for employer, you need to do first so that you actually are able to reach this. I hope that does uh, explain it, uh, Taizo. Um, and then Chile is asking true. Previously, the standard, ISO standard, which is 2009, uh, 2015, integrate quality across the business, the whole business, not just operation. Yes, uh, Achire, I, I believe that too, that quality management systems should be across, not just at operations. And we have seen quite a big integration over the years. And I think that will then also improve how we deliver our products and services, but also it will improve the efficiency of our functions. Okay, are there any other questions on here? 
uh, before I also move. Remember what I said, said that basic conditions of employment is mainly around how the employee and the employer terms and conditions are gonna actually work out. And whereas uh, the other legislation like labor relations, it's just regulating the roles and responsibility between the employer and also an employee. Whereas an Employment Equity Act is mainly articulating what are the targets for the country for us to bring to um, inequality within our country on how each levels are supposed to actually be reported and actually working through. But also keep in mind that the employment equity, it's about affirmation, um, affirmative action, but it's also about the charters that have been adopted by your uh, industry. So you really need to understand as a small business, I personally, especially as a black business, generally say you don't worry too much about Employment Equity Act if you are a black person. Just make sure that when you are employing people, you try to focus on people that have been disadvantaged, but you're also trying to elevate women. Uh, uh, skills development lady is about accelerating the skills. And by the way, entrepreneurs, that skills development is the same one that pays for the interns. So consider also instead of bringing someone who's going to come full time, first bring them as an intern and then later then absorb. There are lots of companies that are actually uh, 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 having uh, students that do need some experience, which you can then take advantage of the skills development levy that get paid through CITES. Okay, someone said they can't hear. Uh, Lindra, please just double check your own personal audio we have tested and also everyone could actually hear. Double check your own audio within the device that you are actually using. Okay, guys, any questions we have addressed the components on what is under admin, please follow the link again. Yeah, yeah, try, yeah, uh, she needs to maybe increase the volume, increase the volume on your device. Guys, are there any questions? Chiri is asking, what happens in terms of quota when you are paying for provisional tax? So provisional tax has nothing to do with quota. Provisional tax is, just an arrangement in terms of income tax that says, instead of paying after 12 months, pay at least six months. So it does not affect the gross. The earnings that get calculated on COID are based on the gross, on the gross salary, gross earnings that individuals have been actually paid. Whereas provisional tax is about deciding that um, you're actually going to build up the, uh, the, 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 you build instead of you paying at the financial year end of the year of assessment, for example, in February, you actually are deciding, you know what, uh, I need to actually pay every six months so that it reduces the burden. But it also allows the uh, the treasury, uh, the minister of finance, to actually have a budget speech so that he knows what to actually to expect uh, in terms of the earnings that he gets from personal taxes and also to companies. I hope that is explaining it. Okay, someone needs to come out and come in, no problem. Uh, please note we are recording, so we will also send you this audio. Guys, do you have any question here? And do you also have any questions in here? Okay, Overking is asking if we only employ workers for the maximum of 30 days per project, do we need to register them too? Sometimes we go months without work. Okay, so if you see, first of all, you're going to need to understand I, what are you saying. Let me just allow you to speak so that you can um, explain uh, how will this work. 
let's see, let me allow you to speak. Uh, Bunole, please allow uh, Obakeng to speak. Thank you. So Obakeng, I needed to explain uh, your, your process and then I will also draw it here. Okay, um, I don't know whether I've lost my administrator here because I, I don't even see your name on here. Bonolo, can you please allow Boking to actually speak? Okay, we are having uh, some technicalities now again. Okay, because I wanted to just make sure that uh, we can be able to understand the question properly before we answer. Okay, so, oh, we lost it. Okay, so. Okay. So no problem, let's just allow her to come back. Let's continue then if there is no one who actually has any questions. And guys, those who are looking for that admin checklist, again, please check on the link that we have posted on admin. We have that link, we also have a presentation. So just make sure you start using it to build the things that you think needs to be built. Remember one business is different to another. Uh, so you just need to make sure that um, you are building in uh, because uh, uh, as you're building in also, sometimes you take stuff out, sometimes you remove, but customize it for your environment because not all of us are good in administration, not all of us are also good in operation. You, you need to figure out which areas are risk for you and put systems and controls to build that up. Okay. I hope there is no question in here. Yes, people can unmute themselves, but people are also not used to, to work these uh, uh, softwares. So it's better to always have an administrator that assist and facilitate. Okay, guys. So assumingly you have done the job profile, you did your advert, and you now got people that are actually now uh, interested. You have received the CVs. Oh, okay. So someone is asking, can the employees be registered uh, temporarily? Uh, can't that people would? So you really have to understand that the unemployed, the definition of unemployment or someone who is not employed is not necessarily the same as when someone is actually how can I say, is working as a temporal work. So as a, a, a business, anyone that works less than 24 hours is not necessarily considered to be or needing to actually be registered for UIF. I will also just double check the legislation, but I, as far as I know, if you, you were, someone works with, and, and they're not working less than 24 hours. Someone is, all, okay, guys, I'm getting really disturbed today. Uh, please post, I will look at uh, the comments a little bit earlier. Let me just finish. So you, the, the temporal employees, think about it. What are you, when they're temporal, these are just temporal em, employees. It's not a full employment. So you have to understand that the purpose or the spirit of the legislation was to cover for someone who actually has worked. 
it was not to cover for someone who has not worked. So it, that is why you have to understand that as an employer, you have to register people that work more than 24 hours at least a week. And that is the spirit of the legislation. Um, the other thing that I wanted just also to articulate is that uh, the, the main purpose of your app was to protect employees should they lose a job, should they lose a job. And a job is defined, as I said, in terms of the hours that they work per week. Okay. Now, let's just assume that you got your employee and uh, your first employee and uh, you are screening, you are getting the CVs. You're going to need to screen the CVs according to the qualification and also the experience. Personally, I honestly believe these days, focus on attitude, focus on character, focus on personality. Any, everything else can be taught, no matter what position it is. The biggest challenge we have as entrepreneurs is getting the right people to work for us. That is the biggest challenge of them all. And to, for us to build our business, we need to bring the right people. So as much as uh, certificates are important and uh, checking for uh, things relating to the competency, I'm of a view that um, attitude, character, values, that is how you should actually be thinking about how you will bring someone on board. The other thing also that I would like to actually articulate is that if you're going to bring someone who is going to look at uh, maybe you will delegate some roles and responsibilities in, for example, like finance, things relating to money, make sure you do criminal uh, checks. Make sure you're not bringing a thief into your business. And I really need you to also start thinking about my business, as I'm building it, what is its growth plan? What does the next phase or the next product that you're going to be, and what those products require in terms of the competence? So make sure that your selection and policies and procedures under your recruitment processes is actually looking into this. You are also even allowed to do testing on checking for competence especially for things like administration. Uh, you need to make sure that, you know, people will say, I know Word, I know Excel. Hey, until you have seen their Excel spreadsheet, create some sort of a test that you can actually do. And by the way, you can also outsource that. There are people out there that will tell you in your industry, these are the personalities that fit. Uh, I think in the webinar that we had, um, that we had, uh, we had the other day with, um, what was her name? Um, I forgot her name. Oh, have, oh my goodness, I've worked, I've worked with her on several, we, in, in, in Cubsulate, that is a business, they do competency, but they actually even uh, guide on telling you which personality fit well, for which positions and for which industry. And I think she's not the only one. There are several other companies, just that with her, I've worked with her. Uh, I think her name is Catherine. I've worked with her uh, on other projects and we, we do checks because the other side of my business, we do placement. We do checks for criminally, for certificates, uh, and we're now starting to do competency testing also because that helps us to make sure that there's a developmental plan for the person, whether they got the job or didn't get the job, because our aim is to help the person to actually be the right position and also perform the best in that position. So guys, I'm off of you. I mean, the cost of doing those things is not as, a, a, as expensive as bringing the wrong person to your business. I have people that have 
Kirsten, her, la her name was Kirsten, not Catherine. I don't know where my head is today. <laughs> I, I think I've got my, my brain default uh, these days. Okay, so guys, just um, please, I want to put the link for Kirsten's website, Where Entrepreneurs. Guys, some of this, you can even get it. You can Google and say, maybe I bring an office or administrate intent. You can actually say uh, Excel spreadsheet or Microsoft uh, uh, test and you check how many hours. You can have different tests. For me, I used to have different tests uh, for different people at different level. So again, uh, guys, test to make sure you don't make the mistake of bringing the wrong person into your business. Uh, I promise you it will reduce the risk and the time because it takes a long time to train the person. Uh, it takes a really long time. Make sure that once you have selected the right person and you are happy, you've tested their competence, your screening is done perfectly, it doesn't guarantee things. You need to make sure that your letter of appointment has a three months probation. And again, we will provide you with a template that will help you to craft the letter of appointment. Make sure your letter of appointment has a three months probation, but it also articulates the role at the global level. It also specifies um, the working hours. It also specifies also how much the person is gonna be paid, including the bare minimum of uh, benefits. Once you have done that, you then have to do the employment contract. So the employment contract basically is based on basic conditions of employment. So the employment contract is now saying that in terms of our policies and procedures, this is how we're going to regulate our working arrangement. And we will also give you the template for a typical employment contract. But I want to discuss this in more detail. Uh, and share some experiences with you. About a year ago, I, 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 I've got a client that is actually in uh, the space, uh, it's a technical environment space where uh, the business provide uh, techn technical services uh, to a bigger business. And this technical uh, business uh, the work request comes anytime. So they can get a call like any time of the day. And we looked and analyzed their business and we said, your HR cost seems very high compared to the revenues that you're generating. Only to find that his employment contracts, the terms and conditions that he has set up, do not feed the trade terms and conditions. What do I mean? For example, maybe you are running a restaurant and your restaurant start opening from 12 because you start serving lunch, for example. You're serving lunch and after until maybe supper. So which means you basically start working from 11 o'clock until half past 10 at night. You can then set your terms and conditions with your employees to be eight to four. Because any time outside of those hours is then gonna be considered as overtime. You really need to make sure that your employment contract in terms of the time slot the person is expected to work is aligned to your trade. It's also aligned to the industry really pay attention to that. So when we did a detailed analysis, it was very clear that one, he has employed this technician based on the hours, office hours. Yes, the technician can be called at any time. He ended up now paying quite a lot of on calls, plus also he pays for overtime that he should not, because in most days when it's between eight and four, the technician is actually sitting at home and doing nothing because there's no calls, there's not working. So just be careful on uh, how you set that up. As, uh, as an entrepreneur, I know there's so many things. Watch for that. That's going to help you to 
you have to align the, the trade, your trading, how the clients request services from you in relation to how your employees respond to it and make sure there's full alignment. Okay, guys, let's allow some discussions and also some notes from people. I'm having a look at the chat. I'm going through. Oba Gang is indicating that she had sent some stuff. Um, uh, okay, Aba Gang, you can send your details directly to no, to uh, um, Nompumelelo Nkwanazi. She's one of our calls today. Um, because I don't understand how come Denise has not sent you that details. Apologies for that. Nompumelelo um, Nkwanazi sent your details directly and she will help you with that. Great, thank you. Okay, I'm not seeing any other comments. Our ties are saying, yes, attitude resilience is a thousand times better than qualification. Uh, even if you use the character profile, it is worth it. Definitely, Taizo, definitely. Uh, Nampumalele, Nampumalele, would you like to add anything that I have added on there? Uh, uh, please unmute yourself. I can hear me. Yes, we can hear you, yeah. but I can't see you. Okay. I'm not, you I, but you, you can decide. Not you want to see me? We'll see me later. <laughs> now, um, I, didn't, I wanted to get is, is over again back because um, I'm also more interested than in the question that she had uh, regarding the temporary um, registration of employees. I got it the way that I read it. it was she saying registration to um, for employers or of the employees? And with which organization, like Ooh, your line, yeah. number mm -hmm. your line is quite yeah. bad. It's it's got it's a very bad. May I may I suggest that you type your comments on the chat because okay. also uh, Obergang is no longer in the meeting. Uh, um, Alfred is saying these are good building blocks for me to add excellence. Thank you so much for the feedback. Oh, she's back. Okay. Um, uh, can you type the the notes um, uh, that you want the things that he's still saying on my side that she's not on the meeting. I don't understand. Okay, you know these tools um, sometimes. Nopumela, uh, do you wanna uh, come in and come back? Or do you want to maybe change the position? The network on your side is quite bad. Obakeng, would you please unmute yourself and explain your question um, uh, uh, when uh, Numpumelelo comes back? Because I wanted to follow up on you also on the question that you asked earlier. Okay, guys, what else you want to add? Oh, someone was saying that. Um, Character, personality, and attitude is profound. Yeah, I promise you. Uh, you, you can't change a character of a personality. You can't change the attitude. Uh, you cannot change those things. But knowledge uh, uh, and um, information and uh, training and coach. I mean, I've had clients that I will refuse to actually help because they are not coachable. I promise you guys. And they could actually be running a big business, a very nice business, but because of their attitude and the, the way they are, they are doing things, I will just say, mm -mm, I can't work with that person. So really uh, pay attention to those things. Pay attention to those things. If, you are, if you're gonna be used, if someone is gonna be taking some roles in terms of finance, make sure you check the criminal uh, 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 do your criminal background checks uh, with SAPS. Um, and also people are forging certificates anyway these days. That is why a competency is perfect. So some, a person says, um, I've got a, a Microsoft a Word document advanced. Then say, no problem. Here is the test. You do it within this time. I needed to create this. Do as much of that, but also try to see if you can't bring that person as an intern. Uh, 
Remember guys, um, in South Africa, we do get some support uh, from uh, the government through CITAS to bring people as intent. So take people from a college, uh, maybe take maybe two or three, but you know you're gonna retain one because that then allows you to be able to monitor the person, see their work ethics, and then absorb the best out of that team. And again, because some of the money get paid. So for example, they pay, um, maybe they pay the interns 3,500, you sometimes top up maybe with about 2,000. That's still better than actually paying the full amount because the person is still under training. Tamba is asking, how many employees do you need for unions to be introduced? Do you have to agree to have a union in the workplace? Uh, that is what we consider bargaining uh, council. Uh, from what I do remember for the unions, you need at least a minimum of 50, but I can double check for you. You need a minimum uh, 50 uh, employees. I will double check that for you. Thank you for that question. Um, and do you have to agree to have a union in the workplace? Temba, a union in the workplace, um, it, it's not actually about agreement. It depends on the bargaining council. Each, each industry has a bargaining council and the bargaining council sometimes sets certain terms and conditions in your industry. So you're gonna need to look at what your bargaining council terms and conditions because if those terms and conditions have been adopted by your industry, you don't have a choice. You will automatically need to actually also comply. Okay, uh, Obagang, please uh, answer, uh, uh, explain yourself. Uh, Nampumelelo is back. Um, I'm unmuting her. Please unmute yourself. Go ahead, Sissy. Explain yourself on the question that you asked. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. So my question was, um, earlier on when you started, I just missed a little bit, but then because of network, when you started um, explaining how you need to register yourself um, and the company as an employee, employer, um, one of my question was that we, in our company, we worked on a project basis. So let's say we'll have, we do ship repairs. So we'll just have a project for 25 days. So I think we consider our workers temporary workers. So there's no need for us to actually register them, right? I think that was my question. Oh, or yeah. even add them to the organogram. Yes, no, those are temporary workers. Remember, it's got, what type of industry are you in? Just to make sure. Um, we do, it's marine, marine engineering. So it's ship repairs, ship repairs. We do ship repairs in Cape Town. Ah, okay, okay. So no, that it, it's actually, that does not need for you to register them because they basically do, it's like a, a, a temporary work that is not uh, necessarily fitting the definition. Uh, but I'm also gonna just double check this trade union question. Nampumela, do you wanna add anything? Um, no, I'm actually gonna agree with you um, to say that they don't need to be registered. I think she's referring to the UIS, right? They registered with the UIS. No, we're not. Uh, yeah, but you need to register with the UIF because the, the, the UIN 19 requires you to disclose whether the person is permanent or temporarily doesn't really matter. The UIN 19 is almost like it's the same document that gets used for them to give us the data of where are we with unemployment. So you need to oh, have okay. that in place. And that, that one is one of the checklists under admin, uh, Obergang. Have a look at it. And we will also include okay. that template even on your, on your list of the documents that you will have on, your, on the website membership site. So first okay. of all, guys, the trade union, for it to be registered, it must actually have at least 50 members. And 
uh, for your business, in terms of your business, the last time I checked, it also used to be. So I'm just double checking, guys. I will come back to you with that question. Um, Alfred, how many employees do you currently have? I'm looking at the chart. How many employees do you currently have? Was it Alfred who was asking? Oh, Temba, sorry, Temba, please go ahead. Explain to us how many employees do you have? Please unmute yourself. And tell us also which industry. Hi, hi, can you hear me? Yes, say hi. Hi, hi, everybody. Um, so, so Sector Investment Holdings is our company. Um, so we manufacture uh, personal care products, uh, fine fragrances, reed diffusers, and we had been making sanitizers before COVID-19. Um, so there's three of us in total in the business. Um, and my, my reason for the question regarding trade unions is that we are obviously growing quite nicely. And we're obviously going to be adding um, more employees to the business. So, so my thing was that uh, my quick big question was that um, obviously if you're taking care of uh, your team, everybody's well taken care of, and you're paying good rates, um, is there really a need for a trade union to be you know to to form part of the business or to have a union in your business? Um, because sometimes, not, not in a bad way, but sometimes uh, they, they, they can be seen to be um, distract, distract the, the company from doing what it's meant to do at times. Um, so hence my question. Okay, so thank you so much for that question. So the, the trade unions, you are right that as a part of the employee, sometimes they do provide some sort of disruptions. But understand that it's the right of the employee to choose the, to have being in a trade union or not. But your business is still small. So generally, from my understanding, you will need at least, I think, about 20 employees to start then considering if there is a need for a trade union. But also understand that the trade union does not work on its own. They work through federation. They work through bargaining council. So whatever that has been agreed at that level, the, the other ones just need to implement. Um, so. Uh, the structure of, of, of trade unions in our country is rather kind of complex in terms of uh, the federations. So um, at this point, my suggestion will be until you reach a 20, from when you are now having 20 employees, then start asking yourself for my industry, what has actually been the bargaining council and how do they make decisions and how those decisions affect the conditions of employment because a trade union is about employment uh, terms and conditions or basic conditions of employment. Okay, I hope I was able to answer you. Um, do you want to add anything? Is anyone who wants to add? We have Taizo here, who's also one of the big consultants in the industry. Is anything, Taizo, that you would like to add? Uh, no, pre no pressure. Okay, thank you. Sound is horrible. Okay, so I have someone who said, in our company, we'll register them for whatever month they work. Yeah, yes. So, um, I, I just believe the registration, so someone is sharing their experience saying that in their company, they register them uh, every month as they work. If they didn't work, they remove. Yes, that is just UIN. That is not now. You are. You are. I mean, completing the UIA, the UI, the UI nineteen form. You have to complete that whether the person is permanent or not, because that is how they track. But now we're talking about having the person to have um, what we used to call as a deduction and for them to claim the UIF. So I think you need to separate those processes as different. The, 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 the UI-19 
is recording everyone who has who is working in your organization whereas when you are dealing with the actual insurance of deducting of deducting salaries and that one contribution i was talking about earlier that is a different process altogether because that now means that person has to contribute one percent of their salary towards the insurance which is a, 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 a risk of them not actually in case they do not actually get to work or they do not find work or they lose the work or whatever case it may be so the declaration, guys, is a full scope. The declaration cover whether they are permanent, yeah, that you need to do. Because all it asks you, it's asking you for the name, the ID number, the start date, and a type of the job. You have to do that. That, that, you are, that UI 19 has to be done on a monthly basis. But when you are doing the payroll now, you will not use the same thinking. You're going to use a different thinking of saying that, is this person an um, employee? Does they qualify in terms of us deducting that 1%? Are they covered by that legislation, which is your in, um, unemployment insurance? And if they're not, then they should not form part of your MP201. MP201 is the form that you will complete once you have done the 101, Every month you complete the MP201. I will cover it just now when I'm showing you. Okay, I'm looking through uh, people's questions. Okay, 10 employees. Okay, you're still good. Perfect. Okay, guys, I'm looking through here. Is there anything that a person wants, to, anyone wants to add? And some of you are going to say, Precious, the stuff you are saying. We've already got employee, what do we do with them, <laughs> right? <laughs> because maybe you didn't follow these processes. It's never too late. It's never too late to start, to look at what are the things that you can start implementing. It's never too late to look at what are, what are the possibilities and how you can start. Um, it might also mean maybe you need to bring a human resources specialist to come and help you to set up policies and procedures. Make sure you get someone who has worked in your industry. Don't bring someone who actually works maybe in industries that are totally different to yours. Um, I'm looking at the chart. Guys, are you learning? Is this of a value to you? Let's just have some feedback. Okay, I'm gonna just finish the rest of the content. And um, okay, so okay, someone is saying it's priceless. <laughs> Thank you for that feedback. Uh, Tyson is saying, can we as em entrepreneurs employ people at 12 months in intervals than a full term, a permanent? Yeah, I think generally in South Africa, we're very like, we, we are very much, how can I say, we want we want the person to stay, but we also don't realize it costs you more to have that person stay if they're not the right fit. We need to start employing people on contractual arrangement, shorter contractual arrangement, six months and say, let's test, let's see how it goes and give feedback on regular basis on how the person is performing. You are right. We can actually adopt instead of using the full 12, I mean, even, even not even a 12 months because that's a year. We can just say, you know what, we have this project coming through. We think your skills employ people by, by their skills and projects that can they deliver. Uh, did you say, oh, we are learning, man. Thank you, we are learning. Oh, again, thank you guys for the feedback. It seems like you are learning. And uh, Tando Gosle saying, yes, you are learning. Perfect, great. Uh, and guys, uh, we are pitching the content at a very basic foundation. It's not because we can't go complex. We honestly believe for you to go in more information and more complex, we first have to break it in simplicity 
but in a clear process of what is the step one, what's a step two, so that when you now are filling the gaps on those steps, you can fill the gaps based on a clear understanding of what needs to happen from one stage to another stage. Um, okay, uh, guys, as I said, just watch out for that employment contract to make sure it's aligned to your trade. Just watch out for you bringing someone whom you have not done a criminal check and you find that they're actually thieves. Uh, and again, employ people by their attitudes and uh, their personality, not just the qualification. Uh, because you want someone who's willing to learn and who's growing. Uh, stay away from people who the last time they touched the book was at school. They can't even remember half of things that were in that book. So that certificate means nothing. You want someone who's gonna be dynamic, change with things, uh, always learning, then the business is gonna grow. Remember, when your employees and yourself are not growing, you also, the business is not growing. Okay, let's uh, get on if there are no other questions. Oh, uh, someone, okay. Now, the second, the, uh, the third segment within this, just hold on one second. So, are you able to see? Yep. Or maybe this side. Yep, great. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback, everyone. Okay, so once you have established the employment contract, you then have to, um, because your employment contract will also be attached, the job description that you will have done. But from that, you then have to build up the performance contract. Make sure you do that performance of contract within 30 days. The performance contract must have key performance indicators. The key performance indicators are based on the functions that that person perform within the business. The key performance indicators are actually deliverables. Make sure when you're setting it up, you set it up on weekly basis, not on monthly basis, because you want to monitor both input activities and output activities. So what you will do is you will monitor the activities, how long the person is taking in executing the activities, and then the output will look at the results, which is then aligned to a month. So always understand for you to build up a sustainable uh, and a productive organization. Your employees have to be productive and efficient in how they execute the activities. And execution of the activities will then help you to derive the results. There are instances where some of the results may not show the effort because this is just an input effort. They may show the results. And that means that you can change quicker in terms of your strategies and your actions when you realize that the results are not shown based on the activities and the effort. Uh, as I said, the key performance indicators are actually based on functions. And some of you have asked me several times, Precious, how do you build your key performance indicators in the business for functions? Where do the key performance indicators come from? So your key performance indicators comes from strategy. I don't know if there are people here that have actually attended our strategy session. And um, what happens is that you, 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 say, you do something like, okay, this year, maybe I wanna make 5 million, right? Let's just say that as an example. Uh, this year, I wanna make 5 million. And 5 million, guys, is your 
destination. It's like you are saying, I'm going to drive to Devon. Once you have set that target that we're going to have or generate 5 million, you then take that destination and say, okay, what is it that I need to do to actually earn this 5 million? What is it that I'm going to do in my business to actually do that, to, to achieve this result? That is what you now we're calling it a strategy. Uh, we use several frameworks, about six, seven frameworks, but these frameworks are integrated. Uh, so we use a balanced scorecard. And uh, maybe Bonolo, if you can set up the link for the video on strategy, you will see how you build up the KPIs or at the strategic level. But the next phase after you've done that, you then bring it down to functionality because functions then support the overall strategy. So, and I think in our strategy uh, thing, we have more than 140 key performance indicators across. So there's no functions we don't have that we're not measuring. Um, and remember, with key performance indicators, you can measure, you can have KPIs there, you can also have KPIs on the output, so you can do both. Um, so, what you, what you need to understand is that for anything that someone does, if it's not measurable, you can't manage it. Can't manage something you cannot measure. The person is going to be busy, busy but not producing the results. And that's a challenge. And half of the time as entrepreneurs, we're not even there. We're busy chasing, yeah? So you wanna make sure that as you're building up your business, you're employing people that can run this on their own and they can monitor their own results and see what they're doing, whether it's effective or not effective. Okay, are there any questions? Is anyone who wants me to repeat this for them? Add on your sheet, and I think I'm now going to show you one more example, and I will also share some case studies in the next few minutes. Uh, but I would like just to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Patrick, are you, are you good? Over again, Leandra, are you okay? Can I continue and finish off here? Okay, let's do that. It seems like everyone is good. Yes, everyone is good. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you. Great work. Okay, so let's assume you did manage to employ <laughs> this person and you are happy, they're performing well, and even when they are not performing well, you have systems, you have causes that they can attend, da da da. You then start, it's month end now, you have to pay them, right? Let's maybe just make an example that this person maybe. Their name is what? Um, let's just say. You employ this new person. This new person is called Tandy. Okay. Tandy, your new employee is now going to need to be paid on month end. You're going to need to actually create a pay slip. A pay slip that's gonna show the gross salary plus also the deductions and also the net pay, which our mothers and fathers used to call it a take home. Okay, so. On these pay slips, maybe let's just say uh, this person, you're paying them 
let's say maybe 5,000. My 5,000 is too small. Let's say 10,000, okay? You're paying them a gross of 10,000 a month. Let's talk about the deductions. The deductions that you're gonna have, the first deduction you're gonna have is gonna be what? Is gonna be the pay as you earn. It's also gonna be UIF, which is 1% their contribution. I generally say to entrepreneurs, um, please, do not put things like medical aid, don't put things like retirement um, funds and all that. You complete, you're really making your life complex because your business is not there yet. Make sure that your employees can get that at their own personal capacity because there's an administration involved in this. And that cost, is never the cost to the employees, the cost to you. Okay. So pay as you earn and the UIF, which is gonna be one one percent. So within pay as you earn, I'm gonna go and share a document with you to show you how would you know for someone who's earning ten thousand how much they should actually be uh, deducted under pay as you earn. And this is also considering that time, this is a monthly, right? It's not weekly. Okay. I'm gonna show you just now. I will share the screen just now. Okay. So what you do, entrepreneurs, uh, receive of revenue, release a document which is called Employer's Guide. Employer Guide, they release it immediately for... Um, I want the one for 2020. Perfect. So I'm sharing the screen now. Bear with me. Okay, I'm sharing again. It's not pulling it through. Okay, I'm gonna have to try another way. Okay, let me try this one. So what you do is, uh, I'm gonna pull it from another screen because it's not coming through uh, on Safari, it's coming through on Chrome. Just one second. So I've just Googled um, employer guide to pay as you earn 2021, right? Voila. When you open, uh, you, there is a guide that I'm talking about. This get released every year. You open that guide and don't get afraid uh, of saying that is so what it's 43 pages. Trust me, that's just nothing. The individuals that are paid uh, salaries, they as much as it's within these rates that I'm showing you now, 
when it's an employee, they pay it according to a table. So I'm gonna go to that table now. Mm, hang on. It's not in here. Employee. It's called the text table. Trying to get the link for that. Uh, okay, I'm opening, I'm opening. Sorry, guys. There we go. Perfect. I'm gonna share. Can you see this? It says pay as you earn gen uh, 01, G01, A03. Or should I risk share again? There we go. I think everyone should be able to see this. Remember on our last session that we did uh, on um, income tax, I said a person pays taxes according to the age group and the amount that they actually are earning. Do you see that a person who's under 65 years old, between 65 to 74, and the person who's over 70, they have a different tax regime. Do you see that? So just remember that that income tax looks at the age, but it also look at the amount. Now, let's look for this person on uh, Utandi. He pays with how much uh, is she going to be contributing to 10,000? Okay, and 10,000 is a total amount gross. So, Tandi will be in this threshold. So, Tandi fits in this line. Do you see this line? So, Tandi's pay as you earn is going to be between the 9,978 to 10,028 rand. That is equivalent to 100, an average of 120,000 per year. Tandy, how old is Tandy? Is Tandy less than 65? Yes. Therefore, Tandy will contribute 554 as a pay as end. Now, on your deductions on here, on the deductions on here, I'll stop sharing. On the deductions here, Tandy's uh, amount will be how much? 554. Yeah. 554. So what's going to be the UIF uh, percentage that we calculate for Tandy, the 1% of uh, 10,000? I think that is 100 rand, right? I think that's 100 rand. Right? Yeah. Okay, guys, where is my calculator? I don't want to use a calculator. I think that's 100 rand. Okay. Thank you, Nampumelela, for adding that in that table. So um, it's always better, just make sure, guys, you put a link not to the table because that takes too much data on your side, by the way. <laughs> so just add a link, um, uh, the link is better. So the total amount that you're going to need is going to be what? Um, 610. Um, I mean, 564. That's the total deduction that you're going to make. So you then say 10,000 minus 564. That will then give you how much is going to be the take home for this 10,000. So this person is going to be paid. The 
this person is going to be paid nine thousand four hundred and thirty six. That is what's going to appear in their payslip as the take home from the ten thousand rand. And with these, and then you're going to have to give them the take that goes to their bank account that you retain as an employer. You then gonna complete a form. Then you're gonna complete the form. Oh, guys, I'm making a mistake here. It's 100 rand, yes. I'm saying it's 100 rand, but I'm writing 10 rand. So this is 664. That's your total amount. So my 10,000 minus 664, that gives you 933. So here, instead of a four, it's a three. Okay, apologies for that. So this is the take home of this person. You will then, someone is saying it's, it's 654. Oh crap, yes, you're right. I'm not adding right there. It's 654, perfect, yeah. That is why I usually actually have this calculation already done because I can't, as I'm talking, I'm also just, but the amount is here is 9,346, okay? And that's the check home, okay? Perfect, great, we are good. The, the math is right now. Okay, so in your income statement, this is gonna go straight as an expense under your income statement. Remember the four quadrant that we have, that is gonna go as total as an expense plus the 1% that you contribute as what? As employer. And that 1% is calculated same. So you basically are matching uh, the amount that she is paying for Utand. So which is 100 rand. With SARS, you're now gonna pay to SARS using EMP 201 declaration. You're gonna pay to them the five, 654 rand plus the 100 rand, the total amount is gonna be what? 754 rand. That is what you're gonna pay to SARS. You have your gross, which is goes through your income statement as an expense under what? Salaries and wages, right? But you also have to add your own contribution as per the legislation. And in that con con contribution, you will then add it in to the amount that you have taken from the employee because this is what she or Wutan is contributing. And then you pay this to receive of revenue. You have to pay this before the seventh of the month. If you don't pay that within the seventh of the month, there will be penalties and interest. I think we discussed that last time when we were talking about income tax. Remember, it's still income tax that, that is applying here. It's still income tax that is actually applying here. So you have to pay this amount before the seven, so that you do not attract the penalties and interest, which would be 10%. So a 10% of this will be um, 75 rand point uh, 40 cent. 
that is a penalty. And then later, I mean, seven rand. God, I can't do my maths these days. Apologies for that. Anyway, um, 10% is seven, it's 75 rand 40. So, and then interest is charged on daily basis until you pay. So from this pay slip, you do this every month. This you have to complete on monthly basis. So, um, every six months, you will need to complete the MP 501. MP 501 basically summarize the six months of MP 201. Once you have done that annually, you will need to do IRP5 for Utan, which now summarizes two AMP 501s. So that is your roles and responsibility as an employer in terms of receiver of revenue. So for Rutandi, what you will see is that on her pay slip, it gets reconciled. This is now full 12 months. This is full 12 months. Annual is 12 months. Guys, do you have any questions? Let me take questions. So employing a person, it doesn't end with the 10,000 rand. There's a 1% and there's administration of this. And every month, remember, you still need to do what? UI 19. That basically is completing that form every month. In terms of Tandy's uh, form and the five, you're going to need to make sure that in Tandy's five, you have uh, Tandy's CV, you have the leave, you have certificates, you have um, also any agreements that you have made with Tandy, which would be a performance agreement and your employment contract but you also need to make sure anything's relating to grievances. Remember, the pay slips, you will need to keep at least for three years, minimum. At least three years. And the employee files, you will need to keep that for also another three years. In terms of income tax, uh, anything relating to employee, you will need to keep at least for five years. So what we generally say to people, rather keep everything for five years because what is sitting on the pay slip is also related to income tax. Okay, guys, any questions? I want to hear the questions. I know I was going pretty fast on some of the things. Let me know. But I, I, I honestly also want you not to get freaked out as to, okay, where do I get this? Where do I do? I mean, things like this, doing the payroll, you don't need to do the payroll manually, right? You don't need to do that payroll manually. However, you need to know what the accountant is doing because at the end of the day, you are a director. You're the one at the end of the day who bear the cost if something goes wrong. <laughs> so you have to know where do they get what, how do they do that? And then so that you, you can double check them. 
Tizer is saying, oh, thank you, Tizer, for your feedback. Uh, say thank you, Precious, and the team is educated. I salute you for jumping to online platform. Now it's implementation time indeed. Thank you. She's saying she didn't add the 1% ex to her expenses. Yeah, you have to add that 1% because that's a cost of employing that person. It is a cost to the business. And the other thing people do not add also, it's a leave. Leave is also a cost. A leave, leave, annual leave. Uh, and also you add in the family responsibility, even though if the person chair takes it or doesn't take it, it's still a cost to the business. Okay. Are there any questions, Tim, by saying it's simply enough? Yeah. Our aim is to simplify things because you see, now when you have 30 employees, you now begin to really make sense out of this because the payroll and the pay slips and all those things because all of it is about understanding what that legislation say but also what documents you need to keep and how do you need to keep it and who's responsible for what so again look at that checklist figure out who's doing what within your business how to manage that and start working on it and implementing these things uh, and let's just assume that's not even tidy that's you maybe that's your pay slip you can do it's the same process, the same thing, the same uh, system. Guys, do you have any other comments? Any other questions? Patrick, are you fine? Bopelo, is everyone okay? Okay, everyone was wide awake when I was making a mistake of 665. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know. Patrick is saying, I've been sourcing this service from PayLink. I'm happy with this information because now I'm taking it back to me. So, <laughs> so the thing with payroll, Patrick, you, I, I personally feel it, it depends on the cost. Uh, if, if the cost, my time, so really assess this, check, how much time do I need to do to actually um, do the payroll per month? Personally, I, I, I use, I check my rate per hour versus um, the time I will take to actually do the payroll. So assess it first, assess, what, how much time do I need to dedicate to do the payroll? And from that, you then say, okay, um, it's 78 rand per person. And with you, Patrick, you have, I think about 26 employees, right, Patrick? So 78 times. Uh, Patrick, how many employees do you have? I think you said 19. Okay, perfect. So 19. And does that include you? So it's, it's 1,482. Um, how efficient are you on the system? Are you comfortable that the system, you can be able to easily, immediately work it through and complete it? Guys, that's like a, a 30 minutes job, <laughs> you know, so you shouldn't outsource. <laughs> I mean, if the system is simple enough, you shouldn't outsource. But though the other cost is this part, so maybe you might outsource the, the payroll, but then this part for reconciliation, this part, maybe you can keep that with the accountant this part, that's still fine. But the system should also, you, 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 you make sure you get an accounting, a payroll system that's already integrated with SARS so that then this automatically happens. It doesn't need you to physically manipulate and do things. Very easy, I mean, I, I, and then, uh, yeah, because remember, this is every month, right? times 12. 
That's almost 20,000 rand. <laughs> and remember, this payroll, you're still going to submit the MP201 12 times. You're still going to submit um, the RP5s for each employee, which is 19 RP5s. Um, in your case, uh, Patrick, and also M2, MP5 for one. So just be careful. Consider, yes, you'll save yourself about 20,000 a year, but also consider your cost. So I generally say, you know what? My rate per hour is about 3,500. So I will say, okay, every minute that I spend is roughly divided by 60. Basically, um, now, okay, divided by 60. So it, my rate is basically about 58 rand per minute. So if I'm spending any minutes that on something that someone can, so relay, Patrick, also relate to your rate per hour, you know, also related. So again, move away from printing pay slips. Cut cost there on your printing cost. Have pay slips that come on a cell phone or a WhatsApp. Uh, and have a backup of the pay slips. Keep, keep everything electronic. That will also cut some of your cost. You might find out that 78 rand, it end up being way cheaper. So just consider those things because at the end of the day, it's about time, cost, the benefits. It's about opportunity cost. What will I do with that time? If I was doing something that I'm supposed to be doing, that is productive. How will that actually work? Okay. Uh, and, uh, last time someone has said, I am firing my accountant, not firing people here, guys. This is to empower you as a director because you can't manage something you don't understand, right? You have to know what they're doing because at the end of the day, if things go wrong, who's going to be held responsible? You will. So, yeah. Mm. I'm looking through, okay, Tyson is saying, I found that the retirement I made by my, uh, made by pays and law, I wouldn't do so much for staff, but for directors, it is something to consider. Oh, okay, yeah. So Tyson is saying that having a retirement annuity paid through your payroll as a director, it does reduce uh, your pays you in. Yes, it does. But you can also file it annually, like everybody. And then every year you will then get a refund. So you can choose. I generally prefer to do it once a year because it's quicker and cheaper. But also I always get a refund. So I think you need to then, because also it's about cash flow. So if you're doing it, if you have a problem with cash, cash flow, do it monthly. If you don't have a problem with cash flow, do it annually. Then it will assist. Okay, guys, we're almost done with your time. I'm taking questions and I'm allowing everyone to speak. Thank you so much for coming. I am, I am so appreciative. You guys are serious about this and I'm so excited. Uh, I think we're gonna be doing strategy on the same program but we also want you guys to invite more people. So when you are sharing things on social media and on our networks, please share it in your network too. We want to expand the network. Uh, we will be having intake of uh, strategy session and also intakes uh, on other components within finance success. Those who have not been in our website, please go to our website. Um, to have a look at what are the things that you need to have in, 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 in basic. I'm gonna do this. And guys, remember, you, I gave you a homework. Please give me a feedback on the homework. Please give me a feedback on the homework. 
Mm, you're so quiet today. Yo, I don't know what did I do to you guys today. Why are you so quiet? Okay, I'm talking to myself today. Oh, but you guys are talking on the chat. Okay, those who have not gone to our website, thank you so much. Um, Temba, Temba is saying thank you for your concise training. Thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm going to copy this. I've just posted. Okay, so we have partnered with uh, ACAS Entrepreneur. So we have a training that is running. You might complete a similar form uh, than what you had prepared. Please don't don't be distracted about that. It's because it's a different program altogether. So please complete it. Um, uh, uh, again, if you still want to be in this program, because we are now doing another selection for another program that we we'll design once we've analyzed the feedback. I'm going to post this on the... Um, Okay. Yes, uh, Shira is indicating that Harambe is got in uh, intense. Oh, there's so many companies that have this. I think um, Bonolo was from one of those companies also almost two years ago. So let me post this on the chat. Guys, um, uh, someone is saying for uh, uh children is saying for those who wish to employ for attitude harambe might be a good place they vet their trainees i like that maybe we should also try them we haven't tried them harambe okay but we are looking for it specialists guys that can actually be on uh be it in it i'm gonna add this guys you're so quiet Please, uh, any questions, anything that you want us to cover, uh, what things, last time we asked you guys if you are interested in governance, there were quite few people. Those who wanna do governance, it also means they need to first do strategy because what we have found is that you guys are not ready to be directors. You don't have a one page strategy that you're gonna give to someone who is gonna be on your board of directors. So as a result, they have nothing to oversee. So consider actually doing that first before you join any uh, governance structures. Okay, obviously, uh, again, please join the WhatsApp group. Those who have not joined the WhatsApp group, guys, uh, we have been monitoring it and going through it. Even when you have a query, maybe you can connect, use a WhatsApp, uh, because at least we are monitoring the WhatsApp. Avoid sending a private messages to me. I'm, I'm quite bad with the phone, but also I don't check. Um, I don't check uh, 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 messages because I, I get quite a lot of messages. Uh, yes, we are recording and we will send through the recording for this, guys. Okay, someone is saying, uh, how do I join a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp group? Please, Bonolo, place the, 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 the link for WhatsApp group uh, uh, for those who have not. And someone is saying, I want to join the strategy. Bonolo, please include the strategy um, questionnaire uh, below for those who want to do uh, the strategy. Uh, and they can then, uh, we can see how we can support and assist. Uh, I'm not too sure though, I want to double check if our funder has covered the strategy, because if they have, then you will, if they have not, you will need to pay. <laughs> no more free stuff. <laughs> uh, and thank you guys for those who completed uh, the, the test. We will also circulate the test immediately on the WhatsApp. Please indicate if you don't have a WhatsApp so that we can email it to you for you to complete. I would like us to change one thing though. Previously, you were completing it without putting your name. I want you to complete and put your name so that it assists me to know who do I need to call and make a follow up for additional support. Yes, here's the link for uh, the survey for the strategy, but also uh, 
uh, look at our YouTube, we have a session that we ran, I think we had two or three sessions that we ran for strategy also. And in the strategy website, we are also loading uh, several articles that can help in some of the issues that we are actually talking about. But at the end of the day, entrepreneurs, what we are saying to you is that there are certain things you're going to make sure you're doing right. And being an employer is one of them. In the afternoon, we're going to be talking about the trader. Most of you guys are not as stuck on that one as much as this. So that session will not take more than an hour. And we'll, because we're having a network problem issue, we'll also try to see if we can record it. But guys, again, understand that as a trader, you're more looking at what your industry norms are actually asking you for. So uh, I hope guys, you're gonna enjoy this. We're gonna actually take pictures of this and um, take uh, pictures of this. Here's the WhatsApp, a link for your WhatsApp has been loaded. Uh, we will also take a picture of the notes here and share them with you. And yeah, I love you guys. And please talk to me, tell me what you need, what, what are the things that you are struggling with in your businesses so that we can come up with people that can support you and help you to move from where you are to your next level. Uh, can we use maybe the next 10 minutes for that? And guys, those who are startups, don't get overwhelmed and also get uh, and feel, oh, I've got so much to do. I recently uh, worked with a client that has been in business for more than 10 years. And the stuff that we've just covered now, he didn't know about them. So don't feel bad that maybe you have been in business for some time and these are the things maybe you had not thought about it or you've not done much about it. Don't feel that way. Um, everything has a beginning and this is your beginning. Um, and don't feel also overwhelmed. Just remember the simplicity, the simpler it is, the better. Obviously we will add more simplicity, um, complexity a little bit later when we are dealing with how you can build now the human resources policies and all those things, the manuals and all that. At this point, just have a clear, what's the process, how that process get followed, what are things that needs to be done, when does that thing need to be done, who's doing it, how much is it costing? Because all of this, if you've done it right, it helps you to also have a better budget. We will cover finance soon, uh, depending on the needs and the assessment. But it's also about building yourself, guys. It's about continuously learning and building yourself. So please share your experiences, share the challenges you have. And everyone is so quiet. Everyone doesn't want to talk today. No problem. I'm looking at all the chat, guys. Please share so that we can find, we can find different teachers and people who can come that come from different industries to actually come and help and support you guys. So please don't shy away from the issues, um, face them and ask for guidance. We are here to help you any way we can. No one is saying anything. Okay. Oh, Tandawood. Uh, I really enjoy uh, uh, listening. Hopefully I will review the conversation and comments. Unfortunately, I'm working for an NGO, but also have my business up. I've, desi I've decided to resign from an NGO and focus on my business. Do I qualify to claim my URF? Okay, turn the horse. You can't claim for something that you did not contribute to. The contribution comes first, then you can claim. I think we have explained this even before when we did a COVID um, uh, funding. Uh, uh, please again, wanna look, add that link for everyone on YouTube. Uh, so, because if you really were to understand, UIF is the insurance. You are basically uh, saying you are looking for a benefit, but you never actually contributed to that benefit. 
So I'm glad we are moving away from NGOs. I think one of the lessons that Umama Utand, who passed away last year, uh, she was from construction industry. She ran, uh, she ran Imoteo Construction for years, about 20 years. She was a doctor. I met in 2007. Came with all these wonderful ideas of how I'm going to do this in my community. You know, at heart, as much as I'm an entrepreneur, I, I'm actually a social worker. Things that I do, I, I should be charging for it, but I don't. So I came with all these wonderful ideas and said to her, oh, Mom Tandy, uh, look at this. This is what I want to do. How am I going to do this? What would be the best way? And she said to me, uh, Mako Susan, you're going to need to understand before you can save other people, you have to save yourself. I think as Black people who are very much open to helping others first before we help ourselves. Focus first on your business, on yourself. Get yourself to be rich, then help others afterwards. And that's the same approach you should take in relation to employing people. If the person is not doing what they're supposed to do, Fire them for heaven's sake. Maybe take Taizo's um, uh, a suggestion where she was saying, maybe employ them for a shorter period than being a permanent job. With the aim that if that person is not good enough for your business, you can then say, I'm not renewing your contract. Guys, life is just too short to make too many mistakes. I think as black people, we have made way too many mistakes already. We need to set ourselves up to start running businesses that last. We need to set ourselves up to start working through on things that last beyond our lives. How many businesses do you know that were running very well? They look at, when you look outside, it was running well. But until that person died who was running it, that was the end of it. How many? I can count few. Uh, so guys, I think success is on our path, but we're gonna have to be prepared. We're gonna be prepared to learn and grow every day. We're also gonna be prepared to work hard and make sure the things that we're doing are the things that can outlive us. And the way you're gonna do that is to build systems. The stuff we've spoken about um, when we were talking about the checklist, system, the processes, those are the things you're gonna need to put in place. Because when someone comes and said, I'm interested in your business, I wanna buy your business, that is what you give them. You're not just gonna give them financial statements. Financial statements are the result of you having done things, for you having implemented processes and systems. Business is about systems. And that is why you can, once you have put systems in place, you cannot duplicate from one region to another. You can duplicate, you can now replicate some way. And that's the purpose of actually having, uh, building a business that lasts. I need you to start really engaging and looking at how you're doing things. What's the direction of your business? Where is this business going? If something happens to you right now, what will, within your employees, is there a person who will immediately jump in? Are you able to bring that person over and say, you know what, so and so, I think you have a potential in five years time, in 10 years time, I think we should talk equity. We spoke last time about shareholding, we spoke last time about directorship that and we indicated that for someone to be a director they don't need to be having shareholding maybe you say for the next phase bring them as a direct then later bring them as an equity holder so guys i honestly want you to understand you will not build a sustainable business if you're gonna run as one man show that's not business you're gonna have to think hard about your business model and your business model helps you to see how you're going to grow, but also based on your aspiration, what you want to do. 
someone wanted to know how can they assess the links that were sent earlier. Uh, you can go on YouTube, uh, our YouTube account. You can also make sure we are load, we have loaded uh, all the templates and we will be loading more as we move along uh, in the program and also based on your request because we don't want to overwhelm you with the lots of tools that you're not actually using. Uh, so Tamba, I will request that uh, all the team to email you guys. Thank you so much, Tande Wesley, and thank you for contributing to our society. Um, okay, guys, uh, thank you so much. I uh, will see you at two o'clock, right? Well, no, it's two o'clock or one. I think it's two o'clock. Can I just make sure that I've got the right time? It's two until 4 p.m. today. Perfect. Um, and we will run uh, the, 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 the trader and we'll share. And again, guys, come with uh, your questions. And also, you had prepared this time. So have a look. Please, we'll share. Those who have not joined WhatsApp, please join WhatsApp. So we'll share also the survey for you to test your knowledge and what we've covered today. Thank you so much. Bye. We'll talk later.